one, and welcome to another episode of Knights of the Turntable. This is episode 49, and with me I have Joe Hover. What's up? And Richard Bailey. What's up? A.K.A. Emperor Palpatine. <laughs> and I got my Yoda ears on, you know, because it's real out here. The, it's, it's the real festive right now. Uh, we may also get Dom onto this particular episode. Hopefully that'll go down. But, um... Let's go ahead and jump right. <laughs> Joe is not a believer, everyone. <laughs> nope. Joe does not believe. Uh, Don, you can, if, if you see this, you got to jump on and dis and disprove. I don't care where you at. Just pull the phone out and jump on the show. But uh, let's go ahead and dive right on into it, gentlemen. What have y'all been listening to lately? Joe Ho will start us off. Uh, I just dropped a Jay Z playlist on the site, so that Jay Z playlist. Nah, uh, it, that that was a hard, hard playlist because I'm already a big Jay Z fan, but like, Jay Z has so many good songs and verses, like it's hard to whittle it down. Like I had 80 on there originally, like I said in the post, and then I got it down to about 60 something, which was like four and a half hours. Uh, so I, I listened to a lot of Jay Z putting that together, uh, and then we're gonna drop a Pimp C one, uh, a rest in peace, Chad Butler. Uh, we're going to drop that, so I've been listening to a lot of UGK and Pimp C today. Oh, man. Um, I actually haven't gotten a chance to sit down and listen to the, the, the playlist myself, but I did look at the playlist and see what was on it, and I'm definitely going to be rolling through that whole thing uh, straight through it. Richard Bailey, what you been listening to? Uh, so uh, I decided to go back and listen to Jesus Peace from the game. That album is 20 times better. There's a documentary about two and two Yes. Uh, just wanted to put that out there. You know. Um, He's a piece of fire. Sorry, I respect it. Oh, yeah. Um, no, it's good. It's good. Also, listen to some Mo Steph um, and uh, a little bit of J. Cole. We'll talk about the track I listened to, but I did listen to the one we're going to talk about tonight. So, that, that's pretty much it for. This week, uh, shout out to Blue because you said J Cole. And, um, <laughs> you know, was the, I mean, the topics this week are not related to best albums of the year, but he wanted us to shout him out and, and throw Yellow Wolf's love story out there. It's like he he don't want anybody to forget that it was the dope project because people will definitely forget. <laughs> I will. <laughs> <wanted> to... <laughs> I'm definitely forgetting that. <laughs> but yeah, it was it was a great album. But shouts to Blue. We'll have him on here again uh, sometime soon. Um, but let's jump into a couple of the tracks that came out recently. We had, of course, Black Friday, which we were behind on, on talking about that. But we had Black Friday, Friday come out on the retail Black Friday. One song from J. Cole, spitting over the All Right beat, and one from Kendrick Lamar, spitting over the Tale of Two Cities uh, instrumental. Um, in that particular matchup, just on paper, Kendrick got the better production there. Um, because Tale of Two Cities is, is, is sick on the production yeah. end. But, uh, sadly, Joe, you haven't had a chance to listen to it yet. But, nah, I was, I was back home, so, like, I ignored everything that came out last week. <laughs> you know, I, I totally respect that, for sure. But uh, me and Rich, we did get a chance to listen to it. Uh, Rich, did you get to listen to both of them, or did you miss J. Cole's? Oh, no, I, I listened to both. I, I listened okay. to J. Cole right before we started the show. All um, right. Go ahead, go ahead, speak your mind. Well, first impression, uh, I just want to know when is when is this mixtape dropping with both of these gentlemen on it? February. You said what? February. <laughs> no, 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 listen. He listen. said February. Which, all right, wait, 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 hold on. Before you go forward, it's funny you say that. Okay. Because at the end of the track, he says, when is that Cole and Kendrick going to drop? Never. He said that on the track. And then he said something about dropping something in February, which is when the track cut off. Now, don't have to really think too much into that, then, then okay, J. Cole's going to drop something in February. But apparently Kendrick's sister put up a Facebook post saying that that mixtape between J. Cole and Kendrick will be coming out in February. It is, has since been taken down, but there's screenshots of it all over the Internet. Um, and apparently she's on it in some fashion as well. Hmm. So now that you know that little bit of information is leaked out, we'll probably get it a little bit after February, or they won't say shit about it at all, and it'll just drop on a random ass weekend in February. Kind of like Jeremiah's album. 
<laughs> oh my goodness, man. They do not want this guy to be great. Like, what the hell is going on with that? <laughs> all this time, people have been looking for it. You, you have all these opportunities to, to generate buzz or capitalize off the buzz, and they said, fuck the buzz. We just going to drop this freaking 728 on a random-ass day of the week. Boom, here you go. Album's out. No, no, uh, no promo, no nothing. It's just there. Except for the track that dropped two days before it came out, I think. Yep. That's pretty much it. But go ahead, Rich. Finish, finish what you were saying. Oh, no. I was just going to say, uh, listen, now, we got a Drake and Future collaboration this year. So if you're going to have these two guys collaborate, you damn sure got to have Kendrick and Cole as well. Oh, man. Like, can you believe, like... Now that the Drake and the future has happened, there are going to be so many people comparing the two projects if the Kendrick and the Cole drop. It's going to be so fucking annoying. Yep. This is, this is automatic. It's going to happen. We're going to be super frustrated with it, but it is inevitable. The comparisons are already happening and the project's not even out yet. You know what I'm saying? So, <laughs> Yeah, that's, that's going to be the negative. And by the way, I didn't even mention what I've been listening to as of late. Um... I've actually been listening to Sabre's Comfort Zone, which came out last year. Listened to that a lot. I uh, went back and listened to Tetsuo and Youth, which is fire still. Um, it was some other projects that came out earlier in the year that I wanted to get a refresher on. Next up, I'm going to listen to Joey Badass's album again to get a refresher on it because we're about to hit that end of the year list. Uh, and put on, Hey, man, calm down, son. Hey, calm down. Actually, fuck that. You were super calm. Sleep. Wake the fuck up. <laughs> Stop hating on Joey Badass, man. That was a good album. But in addition to those two particular tracks, which I enjoy Kendrick's more than J. Cole's, just because J. Cole hit us off, start the track off rhyming nigga over and over and over and over. Like for the first half of the fucking song, he kept doing that, and it was so annoying. But the second half of the song is really dope. Uh, he still did a pretty good job. Kendrick fucking spazzed out throughout the whole thing, basically. <laughs> you never knew when it was going to end, uh, but he definitely he definitely showed showed his ass on that particular thing, and it was very, like, control-esque, not necessarily calling someone out, but the intensity of it, um, which the nature of To Pimp a Butterfly being more somber in his rhyming, uh, it's refreshing to hear that more vicious Kendrick that we knew existed uh, before that point. But we also got a verse <laughs> from the mythological monster, no, Andre that's, 3000. That, that's Jay Electronica. <sighs> that is true. At least, at least 3000 <laughs> shows his face like once a year. <laughs> that is very true. Uh, so we got a verse from Three Stacks on Erica Badu's uh, But You Can't Use My Phone mixtape, which is a very solid listen. It's very chill. But, of course, you know, the web went ablaze because Three Stacks spit some rhymes. He basically came out and justified people putting him on their fucking uh, best ever alive list and shit by dropping that one track for the year. <laughs> but let's talk about the verse itself. Joe, what would you think it's it's fire. It's it's one of those things that makes you pissed off that he doesn't consistently put out music. And I was thinking about this when I was listening to it. Maybe he doesn't give us music because he's afraid that if he does give us a solo, like, I mean, technically Love Below is a solo album, but if he does give us new music, like a full body of work, it's not going to be up to par with what he's done in the past, and it's going to tarnish his legacy. Yeah. That is totally possible. Rich, what'd you think? Uh, let me just say before I give my thought, hey, Love Below was fantastic. Um, yes, it is. I, I never heard one bad song on that album, but uh, you know, others may disagree. I thought that verse that I heard tonight with the Erica Badu song, hey, that was fire. And let me just go ahead and say this right now: you already know I like old school music. The fact that they're using a Ron, uh, Ronald Isley uh, beat. <laughs> yes, sir. Like this song. You already knew I was going to like this. So, yeah. Oh, yeah. Two thumbs up. <laughs> Word. But yeah, I, I definitely agree with what y'all are saying. It was very, very dope. Not only was his rhyming dope, but the singing that he did on there was dope. 
and just the chemistry that him and Eric Badu have on music. I want to hear more stuff from them too, and I think him doing an album would be an opportunity for that. You know what I'm saying? So I don't know, man. We we're gonna be having the same damn conversation a year from now when he dropped like one other song or, or one feature on somebody else. This is what he does now. This is what he does. He drops one feature per year, and it's been going that way since what Beyonce's party, which was yep. like 2011. So it's the nature of the beast, man. It's what he does now. And that's just what we're going to have to deal with at this point. Um, a little, Another bit of news that came down that we haven't spoken on yet. Uh, Kanye West stepped down as the head of good music <laughs> and handed it over to Pusha T. First off, I tweeted my reaction to that, and, and it was pretty much in line with everyone else's. There's going to be a lot of money laundered through that place. <laughs> now that Pusha T is in charge. Like, it's, Yo, oh, Pusha, like, Pusha holds true to that name, though. I mean, he's it, look at the Adidas shoes that he has. They come in a fucking trash bag. Yep, it's real, man. He, and he's not going to change. Him yeah. becoming the head of good music ain't going to change. Nothing. The only he's thing that changed was him cutting the braids, which still makes me sad, like... I hope he didn't lose his rhyming power. I didn't know he cut him. I thought he did in the, music, in the music video that I saw, the most recent one, he had the braids in him. Did he? But you know what I mean? Yeah, but... Maybe I'm thinking of something different. Yeah, and even in the trailer for that short film, he had him, but maybe he cut him after that. Man, maybe. dang, that makes me sad now, though. Damn. All right, I'm going to have to look into that. But uh, how do we feel about this particular news, gentlemen? Uh, Rich, go ahead and let us know what you think. According to Pusha T, he's the last great rap superhero. Uh, <laughs> I'm not sure. I'm not sure what he means by that. Um, listen, I, I'm 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 a little surprised with the news. Uh, I want to know what what's up with Kanye's album. I mean, is Kanye stepping away so he can focus more on making a better album than Jesus, or is he just he all up in his uh, family life now? He trying to casually step away from the music a little bit. Well, maybe you put it in the trash bin where it belongs. <laughs> it's, in, it's in that, that, that dumpster fire. <laughs> um, hey, update. Pusha didn't cut his braids. It was it was a troll oh, uh, that he did earlier you. this year. Woo! Alright. Thank you. <laughs> I was worried, man, because like this, this is prime push time. I don't, I don't you know what's that. funny though is Push is the only one that could get away with braids in 2015. Oh, only one. <laughs> because who's who's gonna question him at this point? Because <laughs> I'm I sure did, as hell am not. But Joe, what do you think about the move? But you know, you know what this shows though. This shows that Kanye really doesn't care about the music anymore. Like oh. this, this absolutely shows that Kanye does not care about making music anymore. Because if not, I mean, why would you step down from your own company that you started? To, you know, I mean, what was good music? I mean, I remember seeing stuff in the videos for it, like to you know, two thousand five, two thousand six ish, something mm -hmm. like that. So you know, it's been going on for ten years. Like, why would you step down if that was you know your thing? I can answer that question. Kim Kardashian. That's why. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I, I feel like the way the, the Kardashians work, they'd be wanting him to take on as many business ventures as possible. Exactly. Oh, no. He, he does have a business venture. His job is to fuck his wife. So that's why he's <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. It is. Yo! I don't think I've ever heard Rick's on an F bomb fly. <laughs> Yo. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, goodness. All right, there it is, y'all. That, that's it. Just <laughs> that's the show. We're gonna end on that. No, 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 no. <laughs> Episode fifty next week. We're we'll gonna finish discussing it. That's a, but uh, <laughs> damn. All right. So before we get into the main topic, I'm gonna let y'all know what the secret question is for this week. Now, uh, if you're watching this now live or watching it later, you see that the main topic is a question: Is Jay Z the greatest to ever do it? Um. There are going to be a lot of things that we touch on with this particular thing, but one of the things that is undeniable when it comes to Jay-Z is his business savvy. Mm -hmm. Dude has found a way to maintain his relevance and build on his net worth 
by leaps and bounds throughout his career. You know what I'm saying? Um, super cliche at this point, but he's like the pinnacle of the rapper coming from the projects and blowing up. That, that's exactly what he is. And with that mindset, um, I'd like the, the secret question is this. What newer artist that we have now has the most potential to be as um, influential on the business side of hip hop? Related to how, how good Jay-Z is. So you have the whole show to think about that. Um, and we'll come back to it towards the end of the show. Uh, we are also going to have Dom jump in at some point. She did confirm that she's going to jump in. Uh-oh. Even though she might jump in just to answer the secret question. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> After everything's done. But I also sent the invite out to Kells because I don't know what it is. I always send her last minute. I'm going to have to get her in the group so she know about the shows beforehand. But let's go ahead and jump into the main topic. And, and shout out to Joe. The playlist, he mentioned it. The playlist is on the coalition.com. So go and listen to that. Go and hit the comment section and let us know what you think is the best song on that list. Yeah, I'm putting the pressure on y'all motherfuckers. Y'all got to pick out of four hours of music. <laughs> <laughs> One song. I, I can't even pick Jay Z's best song. <laughs> you got to go through four hours of music and beyond that, as a matter of fact, and pick one song on there. Hit the comment section and let us know what you think, and we will do a shout out for y'all on the 50th episode of the Nice of the Turntable. But let's go ahead and jump right into it. Happy birthday, Jay Z. Today is his big. What? I don't even know how old he's turning. 45 or 46. 46, bruh. 46 is the new 20, as, as he would put in the track. But happy birthday to Jay-Z, and, and there's no better time to discuss his influence on hip-hop, where he stands now, um, where he could go in the future, and, and how we came upon his music um, on a consistent basis. But first, we'll, we'll ask the question, which I'm sure I know the answer to. Is Jay Z the best to ever do it? And in what way do you believe that he is? Rich, pressure's on you first. All right, so let me go back to what you said about the uh, business acumen. Mm -hmm. I think he definitely deserves credit for that because he found a way to have other ventures going on, not just the music, uh, leverage that into other opportunities. But you asked right. the question, do I think he is the best? I think you have to give respect as far as the business stuff is concerned. Yeah. Uh, I do have a preference of a, a other another rapper that I like a little bit more than Jay-Z, but uh, we're not going to make this a versus discussion. Yeah. I'll Everybody say, on Twitter going to handle that for us. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, I'll, I'll give him credit and say, yeah, I would have to say he is the best only because he didn't make it just about music. He tried to do other stuff as well. Some stuff successful, some quite not as successful, but I give him credit for at least being a businessman about how he handled business, how, how, how he handles stuff. Jay-Z is like the Michael Jordan of hip-hop, and I say that because Jay-Z is a phenomenal rap artist, and he always has been. Not so much right now. But if you look at Jay and Michael Jordan's career trajectory, it is almost identical in the way that they were excellent at that one thing that they did. But everything else, for the most part, has been shit. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Hey, he's putting it plain. He's speaking to <laughs> Such as his presidency of Def Jam. Absolutely terrible. Terrible, which was like Michael Jordan running the Charlotte Bobcats. Yeah, yep. he has a valid point. That's true. Yeah, their their career tra trajectories are kind of similar in that aspect. I, I mean, as a Jay Z fan, I fully believe that he's the best to ever do it. I mean, if you just look at where he came from, from Reasonable Doubt, and I mean, Reasonable Doubt, that was his first album, and it was like prophecy. And he even says, "I gave you prophecy on my first joint." Like. He came in and he took over hip hop and he made it about. And that's, I mean, he ushered in a, a sound like by finding, I know he didn't really find him, but when The Rock had Kanye and Just Blaze in the Soul Sample era, like he helped bring that in and make it popular. Like he's, you know, say what you will, he's to, he stole Young Chris's flow. We all know that. Mm -hmm. But he did it better 
And it's you know, he's he's the best to do it. Word up. Um I definitely agree. Like on the <laughs> I appreciate everything he does musically, of course. Um, I, you're right on the Def Jam thing, but on another side of the business thing, he can he does a great job managing himself. Yeah. He just sucks at managing everybody else <laughs> in every single way. He cannot man like how are you the head of Def Jam and you can't promote these artists like. Because he at that time he had Rihanna, he had the Roots, he had Method Jay-Z, Man, which, yeah, Jay-Z. Method Man, Tierra like, Marie, like the list just fucking goes on and on. <laughs> and the only one successful out of those were the ones who worked with him the closest later, Jeezy yep. and Rihanna. Yep, that's true. Rihanna. Um, so like he he maintained his reverence. We've talked about it so many times. How you see him, he put his name, put himself in the right position every time to stay relevant and to grow um, with with his wife, you know what I'm saying, with her music. Mm-hmm. He definitely maintained with that, with the, with the um, shit. He basically capitalized off, off this, the feature on Justin Timberlake's joint. Yep. Um, Kanye, he kind of leached off of Kanye's rise to yep. Infamy as well because Jay-Z's lyricism deteriorated way, long time ago. It was probably Honestly. probably around American Gangster. American Gangster yeah. was like his last great project. Yeah, like American Gangster, like he had bad projects before that lyrically. American Gangster was like the la- the mustering of the last bit of his fucking rhyming capabilities. Yeah. <laughs> he was like, I'm gonna put everything I got into this, and after that, all production, man. Like y'all y'all remember the uh, the the promo for Magna Carta Holy Grail. It was all about the people that were in the room with them on the on the production side. Yep. It wasn't about no rhyming. You gonna nod your head to this. Don't mind what I'm saying. And even then, and even then, some of his projects, even after American Gangster, have their moments, but it's not it's not front to back. No, not at all. Not front to back at all. Um, and the, actually, that was another big move to promote himself. The whole deal with Samsung yep. put himself in the record books, and we didn't have a choice in it at all. <laughs> and he stole that business model from Kanye and and Beyonce to say, yeah, yeah. To say okay, something. Yes. You know. yep, that's very very true. But yeah, he you know, totally capitalized on that. Hit the record books and everything. Had everybody everybody talking about an album that they probably would not have been talking about at that capacity at all. Uh, when it dropped, and you know, he just forced himself in. He just kicked your front door in, uh, jumped on your cell phone, and was like, "Hey, I'm here. Listen to it f- for technically free." But what was y'all's first experience with Jay Z? I'm actually gonna let Joe go last on that one because he, he he has the deeper story. Rich, what was the first time you listened to Jay Z or became somewhat of a fan of Jay Z? Oh, man, man. You you really should let Joe go first since uh, <laughs> I'll, I'll go first. I'll go first. Yeah, yeah. I gotta... So wow. I'd heard I'd heard Jay Z plenty of times up to this particular track that came out, um, but I never listened to him on a consistent basis. And it's interesting that the song, and y'all gonna hate me for mentioning it, but it's the truth. Ether is what made me start listening to Jay Z's <laughs> music. <laughs> uh, you missed the joke, but I, I was saying that y'all gonna hate me for mentioning this because you know what it's gonna lead to. But Ether is what made me start listening to Jay Z's music more. <laughs> We're not gonna talk about who won and who lost, but the thing is, I mean, well, we can of- all agree Jay lost that battle. Let's just say it: Jay <laughs> lost that battle. As a Jay yeah. fan, I will fully admit that Jay lost that battle. Right. And it's just that this was this was my favorite hip hop artist at war with somebody. So of course I'm like, yo, I need to look more into this and I need to give it a listen. So I started listening to his albums. Um and you know, I enjoyed him. I didn't think anything of it. But as I got older I got I I had a more of a, a appreciation for his music. And um Especially listening to the blueprint. I got hype off the blueprint way after everyone else. 
um, had experienced that. But I, I have the same feeling that everyone else had uh, when they listened to it. Unfortunately, I also had the same crappy sh- fucking feeling when I listened to Blueprint 2 and Blueprint 3. Um, but I don't hate Blueprint 2 as much as most. I still think it has some really great tracks on there. But uh, Blueprint 3 was like the beginning of the end as far as him riding the wave of production and, and, and shock value for the most part. But uh, how, how about you, Rich? Are you ready? Yeah. Um, <clears throat> my story may not be quite as memorable as yours. That was a pretty excellent one because, yeah, Nas, that's, that's, that's the guy, but that's another topic. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, yeah, you know, I listened to a lot of uh, Jay-Z in high school. Uh, you know, I, I mean, I know at the time he was, was releasing a lot of videos. Uh, I remember Big Pimpin'. That was a song that everybody liked in, in school. Um, I also remember some of his older stuff, Do It Again. You know, Beanie Siegel, uh, you know, everybody from that was in that whole clique. Um, and that pretty much was a lot of the first things that I heard from Jay-Z. I did actually pick up one of his albums. I'm not really recall. I don't recall which album it was. I know the song on the album was uh, Song Cry. Blueprint. Okay, yeah, Blueprint. Okay, yeah, Blueprint, that's, that's the first one then. That's the first one then. Okay, I thought it was okay. Um, I know he tried to get a little emotional on some of these songs. Uh, that was one of the songs he was a little emotional on. I said, "Oh, that's that's interesting." Um, but uh, I mean, I mean, he just that that was an artist that everybody was into. Uh, I heard a lot of it while I was in school, so that that encouraged me to just you know, and really again, listen to him, listen to Nas, Biggie, of course. These are the artists I was listening to when I was back in school. I haven't listened to Jay-Z quite as much since then. I did hear the last album, and it was all right. But, again, I have to question, I don't know what else you can rap about, Jay-Z. You got money. You got the, you got, you got your woman. So I, I don't know what else you can really talk about at this point. But, uh, you know. He can talk about these paintings that we can't afford. <laughs> Yo, I, I am fully here for stunt mode, Hove. I am fully here. <laughs> that's all that's left. That's all that's left now, and he's good at it, though. I mean, he's he's already proved everything. Like this is what's left, and I'm I'm cool with it. <clears throat> this man wrapped in in a museum in an open space. And, and, and treated it as if it was like artwork. And I mean, I had people eating all of that shit too, like yep. for real. <laughs> hey, dude is smart. When it comes to building himself up, effing brilliant. You know, maybe he'll be behind the scenes for like Beyonce stuff, or maybe he can help Kanye out. He needs to go in there and just sit down and just say no a few times. That's all. <laughs> <laughs> nah, bro. No. Because, I mean, he'll listen to Jay. He probably won't listen to anybody else, not even Kim. But if Jay come in there and frown up the, the, the place, Kanye ain't going to be hurt. <laughs> he'll go into the cave or go to some island and record his whole album again. <laughs> but, uh, Joe, go ahead and drop some knowledge on how you encountered Jay-Z's music and also how you got your name, sir. Um, So I heard my cousin came over one day. He had one of those Now CDs. It was like Now Volume 2. And Hard, oh, wow. Knock, Hard Knock Life was on there. And so we we played Hard Knock Life like back to back to back to back to back. Like I couldn't get that bass line out of my head at all. Like I love that song. Um, so I started listening to and I mean I this you know, this was like ninety eight, ninety nine. Um, and of course I saw Big Pimpin' on MTV. Uh, I didn't really start getting into the Jay Z until Blueprint. I saw I was <laughs> it was a Saturday night, I was at my dad's house. It was like two o'clock in the morning. This is when MTV still played videos, and so uh, Song Cry comes on. And I'm just like, okay, this is kind of cool. And I'm, you know, I'm watching the video and the transition, and I get the concept of the song. I was like, this is fucking awesome. Like, it, has anybody thought of this before? <laughs> um, <laughs> and so I started, uh, I started listening to to Jay more and more. Uh, Blueprint two, I didn't get Blueprint, uh, but Blueprint two was one of it was a Christmas gift like the next year. Uh, and so I played that out, like even the crappy songs. Like I, you know, I didn't know any difference. I was like 15. Uh, I played those those shits out. Uh, but how I got my name too is, uh, and I wrote this in the post on the coalition, so so you could check that out later too. But uh, I had this friend in middle school and high school, and we we had the same homeroom, we had the same locker, uh, all that kind of. You know, we had a locker like right next to each other and stuff. 
And so he knew I was a Jay-Z fan. He started calling me Joe Hova. And he kept calling me this, and, you know, I, you know, I went with it and whatever. And then one day he stopped. He says, I got to quit calling you that because it's too much like Jehovah. <laughs> and he was, like, he was, like, really religious and shit too. So, so I understood it. But, um, but then, like, I was in college, and I couldn't think of, like, any cool names, like, to be on air. So I started going by Prince J. And then um, I rebranded the site while I was moving to Augusta. Like, I, I shut it down, and I was just like, you know, I need to rebrand. And then I remember that story that I just told. I was like, you know what? I'm going to go with that. I'm going to run with that. And Jehovah was born. Yep. Oh, yeah. That's, that's a good story. The indie hip-hop cultivating God. <laughs> <laughs> so so I, he might not see this, but shout out to L.A. He, he was one of my, my really good friends in middle school and high school, and I owe him the name. So. Word. Big ups to that. So... Now you know, uh, you know anybody that's watching the show and anybody that watches after the fact, hit us in the comment section and let us know what experience you have with Jay Z as well. Um, if you if you hate him, feel free to comment that too. You know what I'm saying? It's gonna happen. It's the nature of things in the internet. But uh, let us know some songs that stood out to you early um, in his career or early in your experience with him, because uh, there are people that are still discovering Jay Z just now. So. Anything can happen. But let's at least try not to make it a versus somebody else thing in the comment section. Let's try not to do that. We're going to yeah. talk about this today. That other person is going to have his own episode, too. Believe that. Well, I have a lot to say about that, that, that episode. Word. So now to also talk about Jay-Z is there's a lot of people that we were exposed to courtesy of Jay-Z's prominence in hip-hop. Uh, a lot of, you know, Rockefeller people, Benny Siegel, you know what I'm saying, uh, Kanye, technically Rihanna and Beyonce at a point, for me at least. Um, but were, are there any, and Jeezy, of course, because the connection that Jay-Z and Jeezy have, man, I don't know what it is, but them together is absolutely phenomenal. Their stories are like, they're both former dope boys who made it in rap. Yeah. That's very true. So if y'all had to pick a favorite person that y'all learned of through Jay-Z's influence, obviously is greatly in uh, – so shout out to Blue because I know his answer would be J. Cole. <laughs> uh, because, I mean, dude's whole career early on was built off of him meeting Jay-Z or trying to get to meet Jay-Z and spit a few bars. And the fact that – he damn near claims New York more than his actual fucking hometown. Uh, but that's that's a conversation for another day. Uh, but who would y'all say is the favorite person that y'all learned of through Jay-Z's music? Uh, yeah, and you know what? And it's going to relate to to the the other thing that I think we're going to talk about later. Uh, chat, Pimp C. Pimp C? Like, yep. pen, like, dog, when when I heard UGK on Big Pimpin', like, when I was younger, you know, I didn't get it. But I once I went back when I was older, Pimp C is seriously one of my favorite artists ever. Like, he kept it real and he kept it raw on 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 record. Um, so I got to thank Jay for introducing me to UGK. That rich man, you took his answer. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I'll I'll, uh, I'll go next while you think of another one, Rich, but you're probably going to be mad because my answer might have been your backup answer. But my answer is Kanye West. <laughs> As, I mean, it's super easy, but no joke. I, I like Kanye. His first two albums are going to forever be in my rotation. Like, they are never not going to be in my rotation. Um, they're arguably in my... Top 20, top 15 albums, hip-hop albums of all time. I love them so much. And I learned of Kanye through Jay-Z. And, you know, there's also the partnership there between them and the influence there. But I was listening to Kanye's production before I even knew who Kanye was. And I was nodding my head just like everybody else. And it was super dope. And then I started listening to his stuff. Through the Wire was my first um uh, experience with him then, and I actually didn't even like that song that much. Um, I got made fun I, of for liking that song. For real? <laughs> for real. 
I probably would have been one of the people making fun of you on that particular one because I just didn't like that song as much. But I have a much greater appreciation for it now, uh, especially because I didn't know about the accident and everything yeah. until that song. Um, so to see his story grow from that moment is absolutely phenomenal. But Rich, are you ready? Do you have your answer? Let me just say something real quick. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, you know, Kanye was something I would have mentioned. So, yeah, as for UGK, I really, really like that song Country Cousins that he got with Talib. So that's why. Mm. I have. But that's all right. That's all right, y'all. Y'all, 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 y'all are fine. Um, <laughs> listen, uh, there's so many ways I could take this. Uh, there's so many ways I could take it. I'll just say this. Uh, I do like a few of the artists that he did work with. Uh, Foxy Brown was, he had some good music back in the day. Not so much after afterwards, but mm. he was all right in the beginning. Um, Pharrell worked with Jay-Z a couple times. Um, and Pharrell is an excellent, you know, he does an excellent job with everybody he works with nowadays. Snoop's last album, a perfect example of that. But um, yeah, I was talking to somebody about that today, and I was like, "Rich mentions Snoop's album every episode." That <laughs> Listen, that album is fantastic. That album. Is fantastic. <laughs> um, and let me go ahead and say this, and this may be controversial, but I have to say it because it is the truth. I'm gonna go ahead and say Nas. You want to know why I say Nas? Because of course, when they had their beef going on, um. I, I, I am a firm believer that competition is good for both sides. Mm-hmm. Uh, it helped out Nas. Of course, they, they, I know they had their collaboration song. Um, I, I mean, I, I just don't see I mean, I, I think that Nas was already an excellent artist, but, you know, he needed a challenge. And when they had their little challenge, yeah, you could say he won. But still, Jay-Z found a way to still work with him, to do business with him. So to me, that... I think Nas benefited from that as well. Yep, very true. So, yeah, uh, I know some people. Some people will think that's controversial, but that's my opinion. Gotcha. Um, I, you know, honorary mention, just Blaze. Oh yes. Oh. That yeah, honestly, that that's a really big one for me too. You're definitely right about that. I'm sure I mean, and, that and that's the other thing I was trying to think of because I was doing this list and I was listening to like all the tracks that Just Blaze did for for Jay. And they're all like bangers. Like, and I think I said this on Twitter the other day. I think Hovey Baby might be the best Just Blaze produced song. Oh, there's so many choices though. Like, <laughs> this is as bad as me telling people to pick one song off that damn playlist. Uh, Hovey ba- <laughs> j- just the way that 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 song is structured from the the way the beat is put together. And the way that Jay flipped his rhymes, like every few bars, like it was, it's just, it's a dream. Like that, like when you, when, when aliens come down and ask what hip hop is, you should play them that track. But we should play Jay Electronica for them. No, <laughs> we should, we should let them take Jay Electronica. <laughs> yes, he has been taken. That's why we haven't gotten any music from him. <laughs> Uh, did, you, did you put Hovey Baby on the playlist? Oh, of course. Okay. Yeah, this one there. I think the only song that I missed that I really should have put on there is Threats. Word. Uh, let me just throw one last thing out there. Um, this is a controversial one as well. Now, let me just say I do not condone the activities that this gentleman, uh, you know, the stuff that he did on the side. But best of both worlds... I thought that was a pretty good album. Yeah, it had, a, it had its moments. It had its moments. It definitely had its moments. The, the, on paper, it was more impressive than the execution, in my opinion. Um, but yeah, you know, I had to listen to Hogan Baby again to get a refresher. Man, you might be right. Um, There's it's a lot of dope-ass Just Blaze production out there to go through, though. <laughs> Yo, hey, there's going to be a Just Blaze playlist, too. <laughs> oh, absolutely. He's going to get his Artist Appreciation Week. That's going to happen, for sure. Um, you, you know what? Dom really might show up at the last moment, right before we shut this whole thing down. 
<laughs> Yo, are we about to talk about Chad Butler, though? Strike it on up, sir. Yo, Chad Butler has got to be one of the most influential artists in hip-hop. And not just for Southern hip-hop, for hip-hop in general, because that man spoke his mind and did not care what you thought. And I loved every minute of it. I didn't really get to appreciate Pimp C while he was here. But now that I get to go back and I listen to, to like his music and his interviews and stuff, I wish – I think if I would have been older, I would have had a better appreciation for UGK's music when, when they were out. Because I was in college. Like when, uh, when Pimp C died, I was in college. I was in like my sophomore year of college. Um, but like that's about the time, like right in that college gap is when I started like really, really listening to uh, UGK. Um, but I mean, there, you know, it's a damn shame. It is. I, I didn't have that appreciation when they were popular either. Um, I had to go back to a few things as well. But I definitely understand what you're saying. Influent, like just on rhyming as he did and, and being able to say what he wanted in that way and it be that fun, that definitely influenced a lot of people. And not only I that, I mean, he the way he produced and he sang on tracks and he couldn't sing, but it sounded beautiful. Yeah, like he, he, just, he had these ideas and he just like, I don't care what they think. <laughs> Like it's going down on this track, and that's that's why I like. Uh, I'm pretty. I I can't remember how long ago it was, but uh, I, it might be in that book that I got from when I met Julia Beverly at work. Uh, but UGK was more of Pimp's thing. Like he wanted it to succeed more than more so than like Bun. Than Bun B, yeah. yeah. I can believe that though, because you. I mean, you can tell. On the creative side of it, like the song structure and stuff, you know who was the the, the mind behind that side, mm -hmm. uh, and you can tell more so by you know rest in peace. But after he passed, the type of stuff that Bun B did after that, yeah, um, it's nowhere near as creative as that. And you, you can shoot for a short time. You can say the same thing about Big Boy and Andre 3000, but not recently though, because <laughs> Big Boy has gone like. I will say though that when Pimp was locked up from from what you know whenever it was I think it was like 01 to like 04 or 05 or some shit um Bun was on a tear during that that time period he was always putting on for Pimp um, no, always, always yeah so like you would hear him on like every little John song like saying free Pimp C like you know it it was beautiful to like I mean, Bun was like – it sounded like he was motivated even more when Pimp wasn't there because he had to carry the torch. You know, I understand that. I respect that for sure, and that's definitely true. Um, I mean, even to this day, he still gives Pimp C – a lot of artists still shout Pimp C out a lot of the time. So I respect it for sure. And that Country Cousins that you mentioned, Rich, that song is so fire, bruh. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that song is super fire, dude. Uh, but was there anything that y'all? Oh, matter of fact, Rich, I'm sorry, uh, I didn't let you speak on Pimp, Pimp C. Did you have anything to say, sir? Uh, well, uh, um, I, I hate to uh, give you some unfortunate news. I haven't listened to a lot of his stuff, so now I have to listen to it to hear you guys talk about a lot of the stuff that he did. You know that he did do, so I gotta listen to more of his uh, music. Yeah, you definitely should. Uh, where should he start, Joe? Sipping yeah. on the syrup. <laughs> oh, I know that song. I knew he was gonna have the uh, the answer. <laughs> I, actually, you know, what? let me let me pull up this list because because um, I think these like first five songs are a good starting point. Actually, bump that. The first the good starting point is Joe's playlist that he's dropping <laughs> this weekend. <laughs> that is uh, a good starting uh, point. Right yeah, exactly. Um. <laughs> So it starts off with Let Me See It, uh, the Pimp C remix of Pocket Full of Stones, Sip It on the Syrup, Pour It Up, and then Take It Off. Let me see it. Let me see it. Let me see it. Dog, this weekend is going to be so dope. <laughs> Pimp C and Jay-Z playlist for my commutes for the rest of the weekend, dog. I'm hyped. As a matter of fact, going out tonight, I'm going to listen to the Jay-Z for sure. <laughs> All right, so... Now that we have addressed the main topic of the show. Oh, you know what? Before we close out the Jay-Z topic, we got to get another answer for y'all on, on the last thing for him. Your favorite Jay-Z album. Which one is it? Ooh, that's tough. 
Yeah, that was a tough one. Uh, um, I'll, I'll start it off so y'all can have some time. Um, for me personally, it's it's very tough because I really, really liked American Gangster except for like one song on there. The one with Lil Wayne? Yes, that one. <laughs> <laughs> that one right there. Um, but I'll, I'll probably have to go with Blueprint One. Um, Reasonable Doubt is up there. I really enjoy Reasonable Doubt, but I didn't enjoy it as much as I enjoyed Blueprint because that song that that is just the sound on it is just so good. Reasonable Doubt, the rhyming from Jay is impeccable on there. Um, probably the best rhyming he's done in his career was on Reasonable Doubt. But I feel like Blueprint was better as far as the meshing of his rhyming and the production. Um, I also enjoyed Black Album. Um, Black Album was one of my first full Jay-Z experiences as well. Uh, But yeah, I'm going to go with Blueprint. Um, For me... I heard, let's see, I heard Blueprint 2 first, I heard Black Album, and then uh, Blueprint, and then after that I bought Reasonable Doubt. So I didn't hear Reasonable Doubt until about my fourth like album from Jay that I like purchased in sequence, but it's Reasonable Doubt for me. And I think a lot of it is because, A, my copy that I bought when I was like, I don't know, I was like 19, I think, it skips to this day between... Dead Presidents and Evils, <laughs> because I played those three songs, Dead Presidents, Feeling It, and Evils. I would like rewind those all the time in my Alpine CD player and my Cougar, and like just that whole album, the way it's structured, like like he had Irv Gotti on production. I mean, you know, Ski killed Dead Presidents too. It's just you know Biggie, him and Biggie trade verses like that on Brooklyn's Finest. It's just. I mean, it's it's the quintessential like hip hop album to me. Making me want to change my choice, man. <laughs> Richard Baby. Yeah, you should change your choice because the Blueprint was the album that I was going to. Pick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you should, you should you should do that. You should do that and help a brother out. <laughs> you, I mean, we can pick the same ones on this particular topic. Okay, yeah. I mean, again, this was one of the first, like, one of the first albums I actually picked up from Jay Z. And as I said earlier, "Song Cry" was good. Uh, girls, 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 girls. Yeah. I mean, the whole mm-hmm. album. I thought the whole album was pretty solid. Um, so that I, I would have to say now. With that said, I do like a lot of the production in the later albums. I'll give him credit for that. Like you guys said, he has some great production. Um, in the more recent of more recent music, but uh, yeah, as far as the lyrical content, and I believe that Eminem was also on the Blueprint album as well, their Renegade song. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I would have to say Blueprint number one. My bad, I muted myself and I had to get back to the screen. We, we out here though. So reasonable down to Blueprints, definitely worthy. Uh, very worthy choices, and if you haven't listened to them in their entirety, they're worth it. Or you can just listen to Joe's playlist. We're just gonna have plenty of cuts from both of them, except for <laughs> Reasonable Doubt, because Reasonable Doubt isn't on Spotify. Oh, oh, sorry. Remember, guys. remember the whole title thing? Yeah, you gotta take, gotta take an L on that one. Yep. Um, that's another example of him not being entirely uh, <laughs> savvy on the business side. Title. <laughs> hey. Yep. It's a valiant effort, my brother, <laughs> but uh, I don't know about that there. But let's go ahead and get into the secret question answers. Artists that you feel will be as influential on the business side of things going down the line with hip-hop. I'm going to throw mine out there. Um, he's, he's nowhere near close to Jay-Z's level right now. And it'll be a stretch to think that he'll be able to get to Jay's net worth kind of a stretch, but the nature of things, the, the, the way things are structured now, I think he has a chance to do it. Ha, chance. That's my actual choice. <laughs> chance the rapper. <laughs> I, I think that on the independent side and the way that he is going with his music, he will be able to take hip-hop by storm on the business side of things. 
Yeah, well, probably, well, look, look at his business model right now. I, giving out free music and just charging for merchandise in the show. I mean, that's fucking brilliant. Yep, and, it, and it's paying off. He's giving these people that love his music a chance. Just, like he, he uh, it was an interview. The dude's he gonna said, be on, he's gonna be on Saturday Night Live because of this. And hasn't sold one album at all. Like he has not sold one album. He hasn't even sold a single. He never even put singles on iTunes no, for them to be They're purchased. free. They're always Every, free. Always free. <laughs> he said this and he has stuck by it. And I remember how we reacted when, when Surf came out. We were like, you know, he's gonna drop Surf, you know, it's gonna be free like everything else. And they were like, Oh, it's on iTunes. We was like, Oh shit, well, I guess that went out the window and everybody's like, Wait, it's free on iTunes though. <laughs> and it's like, yo, what? Where did this come from? And, like, and that's just was... that's just like Angels after what was he on Colbert? Yeah. Um, and it was free right after that on iTunes. Yes, it sure is, dude. He he just keeps it going, and he said that you know there's like expectations that come with money that you pay. I mean, albums or music that you pay for and stuff like that, and the relationship between the fans and the music is kind of skewed. Mm. And he feels that going this route with putting the music out for free. Just you, you know, you don't have an excuse not to listen at this point. So if you like it, you like it. If you don't, you don't. But people love his music. Dude is talented. And it's, it's super dope, and it's awesome to watch his energy when he performs. He's just like, it's like he's a big kid up there. He's just having fun making. I mean, music. he's only twenty one. Yeah, he's you know his first kid was just born. Um, you know what I'm saying? Like, he he's living life. He's super young. He has a lot ahead of him. Um, but I do think on the business side, with the people that he has around him too. He's going to shoot right up there. Um, Joe, who you got? Um, people hate him. I know the answer. Uh, <laughs> he buried Meek Mill this year. Uh, his hotline blings. It's Jersey. Um, yeah, like just, just look at the steps that Drake is taking. They're reminiscent of the steps that Jay-Z was taking. Um, and, you know, he, he signed with Apple for, he got like some ridiculous amount of money for Apple and now mm -hmm. all ever, all of his content. So whenever views drops, that's going to be directly on Apple music. Yep. Uh, the hotline blink video, first place to watch it, Apple music. Like he's gotten a boatload of money from them. Um, I, the OVO radio shit. I mean, that's, you know, that's genius. He has Here's, his own radio show to drop his own music. Also, where he could easily defeat and probably already has, he promotes his artists better than Jay Z does. Yeah. The people that are related to OVO Sound, he they like they blow up off of Drake stuff. Like he knows how to use his influence and his avenues to get them into a lane, and he knows how to build off their image. And to teach them how to build off their image and everything, he's Drake, definitely better at that. Drake is going to be, if not now, in the next five years, the most popular hip hop artist. That when you think of hip hop, like right now, you think of hip hop, you think Jay Z and Nas, or you know, you did at least. Yeah. It's gonna be Drake. You're gonna think Drake when you think hip hop. Gotcha. Yeah, you're right. He's becoming the, the, a very, very big figure. And this year was a big step forward. Yep. So our Meek Mill, he stepped right on your body to get up to that point, too. He had to be one of the victims. And, and the hotline bling going viral like it did. Like, I, look, like listen, listen, this is a, sounds absurd. I bought a hotline bling sweatshirt. I'm going to get the same one. With Drake dancing. <laughs> I paid thirty two dollars for it after shipping. Like, if that doesn't tell you the, I mean, I don't know what is. What will? <laughs> you know what? I'm not gonna get the Drake one. I'm actually gonna get the Cam Newton dab uh, Christmas sweater. <laughs> yeah, definitely gonna get that. I gotta work on my dab. Yeah, I mean, I'm gonna get some practice in. I'm going out tonight. I'm gonna be jamming. I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna get some practice in. <laughs> Matter of fact, the last party I was at, I was dabbing like a damn fool. <laughs> Nobody got it on Snapchat or, uh, or anything like that, though. But look out for it tonight. Rich, your answer, sir. All right, so I think those were some great choices. Um, Chat, so I, I, get, I, I give you props for that choice. But for my choice, and I really hate, I really, really hate to sound like I'm a, a broken record or a fanboy, 
But this particular aspect, I have to say that this person has to be mentioned. All right. Now, I don't. I'm not going to say that they are on Jay Z's level as in terms of the business side yet. But they have already done some stuff that I think catapults them in that direction. That is Tyler the Creator. Um, and the reason why I say that is very simple. Yeah. Uh, this guy took the Odd Future brand and is now put it out into different, you know, taking it in different directions. He has a show on Cartoon Network, Boy to Squat. Yeah. Uh, a lot of the same stuff he's rapped about, he's turning it into other things. And, and recently he had an interview in which he said he wants to, like, uh, I guess, have an internet TV business. Yeah. He, um, said, he said he wanted to do everything. He, he wanted said to he wanted to make ties. Everything. Yes, he wanted to make ties and furniture. He has, like, a venture with furniture right now. Um, oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> yeah you, uh, you definitely mentioned the right person. Tyler is another person. Like, he, he, he's arguably, like, Drake at this point. They both could arguably be considered better at the business side than Jay-Z is. Because especially because they put their people on. Look at where these other people associated with them are now. Like, look at the internet. Look at the people that don't even do music. That's right. Internet. I mean, he put Jasper and Taco and Lionel on on Loiter Squad. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. But he got but he got beef with Haji now. So Haji got beef with him. Well, nah, they crushed that. Oh, it got crushed. Finally. Okay, I'm See, I didn't know anything about it, but I'm not surprised that it cr got crushed quickly. It seemed like, cause like they seem like a family on that side. I don't, I, they, I don't, I can't imagine. Two weeks from now, we got like a freaking diss track from somebody in in our future tour, somebody else. I don't think <laughs> they, you know, they don't roll like that. Is I don't get that impression from them. So, and, and you know, the other thing, as you already said, all of these guys are young. This guy is still young. Yep. All the people in his group, they all young too. So. Uh, and, and shout out to, to Isaac Jones, a.k.a. G.I., who's been featured on the site. He's a dope hip-hop artist out of Alabama. He actually he, – he was mentioned in Drake. I didn't see the message until after you said Drake, uh, Joe. But he also pointed out that Rick Ross would count as well on the business side, which is, which is pretty cool. Um, yeah, I, I think Ross counts. Uh, he's, you know, he's now known a lot for the Wingstop shit. Uh, mm -hmm. And I mean, MMG's starting to become like a label, like like an actual like label label. Yeah, he's he's doing he's doing really well with his artists. He, look, Meek Mill is just doing everything he can to bury himself. But Rick <laughs> Ross keeping hope alive over there. So hey, you know, props to him. You got to deal with emotional social social network people like Wale. Meat Mill and his self destruction, but he's keeping everything alive over there. You know what I'm saying? And, and people are making good music. Uh, Gunplay still, you know he he's doing well. Uh, I guess the only person that kind of stumbled would be Stally, which that's kind of his own fault musically. But MMG is, is is a big deal, and he's done a really great job with pooling production. I don't I don't know if you said that already, but we always talk about that. Yeah, Ross's Ross's ear for productions like top three, maybe ever. Oh, absolutely. And uh, also, uh, G. I said Kanye would have been also if he didn't go crazy. <laughs> if he didn't try to sell us white T-shirts for a hundred and twenty dollars. <laughs> no, the comparisons people have been making to his clothing line and video games have been killing me. Video Dude, wait, <laughs> video games. His clothes, comparing his clothing line to characters in video games. Oh, I was gonna say, you know what I want to say? Like anytime I see like somebody wearing Kanye clothes, which is only on the internet ever. Only I've never seen one person in I wanna life. Ask him, I want to ask him how much clothes cost in the Matrix. No. <laughs> that was the best comparison I've seen. Somebody said they look like people out of Zion. It was. Fucking beautiful! It is legit, man. It's so weird, the whole clothing they line. Look like, like, I don't mean, know what old, it's going and, for. And old Final Fantasy characters, like before, <laughs> like the Super Nintendo Final Fantasies. That's that's when you start the game. That's the gear that you already have. On. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm sad Gary's not on here for this right now. God, oh. um, and you know what? Speaking of Gary, we got to mention Fifty Cent on the business side of things. Yeah, I mean, 50 Cent, somebody said it on Twitter. I can't remember who it is because I want to give him credit because it is hilarious. Uh, that 50 Cent has 
become a pro he retired from rap to become a professional bully. <laughs> <laughs> That's accurate. That is all he does, man. Because now he's gonna have a show on. He's gonna have a show on Fox now. Called My Friend oh. Fifty. Yep. Really? Yep. Whoa. He's got a way. show. For those who don't know, Power is fire. You need to watch that show immediately. I still haven't gotten a chance to, go, <laughs> uh, to, to, to watch that. Um, and also, a shout out to uh, Hated Greatness and Ben Baxter. They commented on the post on Facebook. All Hated said was no, because the question is, is Jay-Z the best ever do it? His, <laughs> he, he, of well, course, he, he doesn't hates, expand. Well, he hates fucking everything, so his opinion doesn't count anymore. <laughs> Pretty much. He be hating the whole time. Uh, but Ben Baxter said that... Um, he said he thinks Jay Z. He considers this a strength, a, a, a strength that Jay Z saw the decline in music album sales uh, well before his peers did. That's why he's in a place now not to depend on music. And I, with that, I mean that's true. He doesn't have to depend on music sales. I mean, you look at the Samsung deal. Yeah. He manufactured his own music sales in that instance. Uh, but yeah, it's true. He doesn't have to. But even if he did have to depend on it, his albums still sell. Yeah. Jay Z's name on a project is still going to sell in the hundreds of thousands. Um, like these artists that are super popular now. Like he's not going to drop anything and it completely flop. He's not in that space, and I don't think he'll allow himself to reach that type of space uh, musically. But. Thanks for the insight, everyone. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Isaac said something else, and I saw the words horrible in there. Uh-oh. Uh, he said Nelly is a beast on the business side of things. And the, the little bit that I've seen, that's very true. Uh, Nick Cannon, he said Nick Cannon might be one of the best business minds out there in hip-hop. While you're right, and you did put hip-hop in quotations when you said that particular statement, uh, the, the, the issue I have with that is the part where you call it Hip hop when it comes to Nick Cannon and his relation to music and stuff, but as far as urban culture on the widely visible side of things go, Nick Cannon definitely is a major influence on that side. So I agree there. And now, how do we feel about Diddy? Um, I see. I. I don't know. I used to envy Diddy. Like I wanted to be like Diddy because I saw how hard he works. But then with the expansion of the internet and you finding out everything, uh, I kind of lost respect for him. Plus, I mean, we all know he doesn't write his own rhymes anyway, so like... And let's be real. You didn't really want to be with like Diddy in that sense. You wanted to dance like Diddy. That's what you wanted. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's bullshit. I, no, fuck that. You know who I wanted to dance like? Dame Dash. <laughs> you saw the the, the gif <laughs> up on. The... <laughs> I want to dance like Dame Dash. I'm gonna figure that out one day. It's gonna happen. I'm definitely gonna find a way to dance like it. But uh, how do you feel about P Diddy, Rich? Uh, I'm not sure if people are ready for my answer. Um, I think that Diddy, it, it, you know, I guess you could say he's a good businessman to some degree, but to me, as soon as Biggie left this earth, so did Diddy's <laughs> presence. I mean, I, I, I mean, I, I mean, I don't think he has had an artist that has been as big as Biggie in, in terms of the popularity. Uh, I could be wrong, but from what I, I don't think they are. They, people don't really have. They don't have that same appeal as Biggie. He doesn't. He doesn't even let his artists grow though. Like as soon as he gets them, as soon as he saps them for the most that he possibly can, he ain't sitting around to let your career roller coaster or nothing. It's like, look, repeat, and you're done. You're on your own at this point. You got to do whatever you got to do. Rich hit him with the holiday season. <laughs> that's, that's so, plus, plus he, he made he made the grave mistake of getting involved with his artists. A.K.A. Cassie. You can't be doing that in business. And he gave Ryan Leslie the biggest L in, in, in music <laughs> industry history. <laughs> Yo, Ryan Leslie got so depressed that he made another album, another fire album, and then he decided, you know what? I'm going to just gonna rap. rap. <laughs> I'm just going to rap. And now he don't even rap no more. He goes around like freaking Fat Joe. Giving speeches and stuff. <laughs> Ryan Leslie doing wake up now. 
no, it kills me because I really enjoy the rise of Ryan Leslie. His first album was so good. His, and the his second, second album, album was, was so dope. Good. Watching his YouTube videos of him making the music in the studio by himself, just him and the cameraman, him doing all the, the instruments and stuff. I was like, this dude is incredible. Then his damn laptop got stolen. And just everything went to shit. Yeah, quote unquote, quote unquote got stolen. And just everything fell apart. And it was it was super lame to watch that. I hope he bounces uh, bounces back. I don't think uh, there's any anticipation for Ryan Leslie, like, even a song at this point. <laughs> like, no, because he did, he did a remix of somebody's song uh, right after it dropped. It was less than a week, and he did a remix of it. I can't remember which one it was. But uh, shout out to Kells. Kells is in the house, everyone. Uh-oh. <laughs> now, you're What's on the tail end. Guy? You're on the tail end of things, but we I do want to get your perspective on the stuff that we have talked about. Uh-oh. Um, the episode is called, Is Jay-Z the Best to Ever Do It? I saw that. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> we've already talked about his business influence and his shortcomings on the business side of things. But how do you feel about Jay-Z and his, and his place in hip-hop history? I equate Jay-Z to Sam Walton of hip-hop, actually. I think he, he kind of, I hate to say this, everybody hates me for it, but he ruined it. Basically, it wasn't really his fault. I don't blame him for it. He's still one of the best rappers ever. But okay. he fucked all of it up with, like, like you said, his business enterprises and stuff, and that's great. He's a very good businessman. He's, he's very good at rapping, too. But I also think he, uh, once, the way he helped mainstream hip-hop kind of also led to a lot of the bad stuff that happened. Was there, is there anything specifically you would point towards as far as him being poisonous to the hip-hop side of things? I think it's more of what the industry did to revolve around him once he was as important as he was. Like, a lot of people, a lot of a and a lot of radio stations, a lot of people compare everybody to Jay-Z and everybody's not Jay-Z at this point. Okay. And so I just think that that his influence is, is great as music as he's made. He's also made it, like, kind of hard for other artists <laughs> to come up in the industry. Gotcha. Um before I, I mention the next thing, the secret question, the secret answer thing that we did, do you have a favorite project from Jay? Uh, the Black Album. Black Album, word. So Black Album, Blueprint yeah. was mentioned twice, and then the uh, Reasonable Doubt as well. Uh, by the way, reminder, everybody's watching the Volume show. Volume 3, too. Volume 3? <laughs> uh, hit the comment section and let us know what your favorite uh, Jay-Z project is. And the secret question and secret answer topic that we had today was basically what other artists you feel would be as prominent on the business side of things, uh, younger artists now. We talked about Chance, and we talked about Drake, and we talked about Tyler, the Creator. Uh, is there anyone else that you can think of or any comments you have on the ones that we already talked about? Um, as far as younger artists go, not really. I would agree with those. I, I think Chance is probably one of the best businessmen, businessmen in hip-hop right now, and it's crazy because he's independent, which is yeah, a beautiful thing. Wild. Yeah. And, um, I mean, there's actually a lot of people following his business model that may have a chance to do something as good as he's doing, but as far as right now, I would say Chance is the best businessman as far as younger artists go. And, and the way TD runs things, they're pretty young, too. I think they have a good business model, but they're just kind of sloppy with it. Yeah, they got to work on a few things. I know who's not following Chance's uh, business model, though. Your boy Vic Mensa. Hey, let, don't. Don't. Oh, <laughs> 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 uh, I hope you don't take a L out there, man, in them streets. I hope you invited me here for this shit. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and then another thing. How do you feel about Pusha T becoming the uh, the, the CEO of Good Music? Uh, I, I think it's dope just because I love Push. I think Push is one of the most amazing people. But I think I hope it doesn't deter him from what he actually is good at, which is rapping. I'm not <laughs> – his, his business is legitimate money. Keep selling money. drugs. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Keep doing what you're doing. We, you, you was one of the people tweeting out the same thing that I said when we found this out. He's gonna be laundering all kinds of money. 
Man, he's washing shit like a laundromat out here. With he's a CEO. It's over. <laughs> it was real. And what have you been listening to lately? Um, I'm actually still listening to this damn Gold Link album. <laughs> still. <laughs> Did you get a chance to listen to Erica Badu's project? Yes, of course. And um. Somebody said something about thanking Young Thug for Andre's verse, and I almost cried. What? But it was tw- it was on Twitter, and uh, yeah, I hope they were trolling. <laughs> Yo, Young Thug's about to be an influential artist, though. <clears throat> I, I, Sadly, is, you are correct. But the thing about it, what what I've been saying is that he's not the first person to do what he's doing as a rapper. As far as the way he raps or anything, his influential part is going to come with the he just really doesn't give a fuck thing. Like the way he raps, Young Star was doing that here in Houston a long time ago. Lil Wayne did that for a while. Like he's not the first mush mouth ass rapper to come out here and do that. Yeah, it really, it really is. And, and, and just expand off of his style even more. Like Rich Homie Quan, you know, and Future as well. I think Future. Yeah. Well, no. I, I think we've peaked with Future this year. I don't think he can do anything more incredible than his year has been this year. But no, Young Thug probably can do better than he has um, going forward. Um, but we gotta ask Kels since he's, she's from Texas, Pimp C. Oh yeah, let's talk about Pimp C because because we, we yeah because of course you know uh, we're we're dropping the um, Joe's dropping a playlist. This uh-huh. week, uh, shouting him out, and he wanted to discuss like his influence and, and everything about Pepsi. So just say what you please, man. <laughs> well, I think that if Pepsi were still alive, the music industry in general would be a lot different right now, and uh, Houston would definitely be a lot different right now. Just the way he conducted himself in the music industry as a businessman and everything. As much as he's a legend, he also had a hand in, in building this, you know. And uh, uh, you know, I I want to bring up Bun, but I'm not gonna go there tonight. So. Oh, oh! <laughs> I mean, we we already mentioned that like once Pimp passed, that's when Bun kind of stopped. Bun turned into a hotel concierge after Pimp died. Like, <laughs> I did. <laughs> Oh, man. All right. Uh, Kills and Sarah. <laughs> Anything else you'd like to add? Uh, no, I, I'm excited to hear his, his playlist. I really am. I I wish Pimp was still around. and It's one of those some type of DJ screw things where they had a vision that a lot of the other artists don't have, and we just didn't get to see it come to fruition from their point of view. Do you feel like there are people in Houston right now that that thrive off of that type of energy that um, you think it will grow grow over there in popularity? Uh, our industry is weird here because it's like everybody here is torn in between being nostalgic of that type of sound and that type of music and creating something new for ourselves. So mm-hmm. I think we're, we're kind of in a weird space as far as Houston goes because we want to honor our legends, but we also want to move forward from it. And like I said, like we we have a very self destructive way of living here that we we like to emulate as far as our rappers go, and, and so I hope they don't carry that on. Honestly, I really hope that that isn't what we are always known for here. As much as I love it, as much as I love what they did, it didn't last. Maybe we should try something new. Gotcha. I can respect that. But you gotta link me to some some the the good stuff that you do enjoy over there because I've seen you tweet a few things out. Yeah, yeah, we got plenty of new artists, and um, before the month ends, I'm going to do a, a best, like, um, independent Houston artist songs of the year, so y'all should definitely check that out. Oh, definitely looking forward Hell to yeah. that. Uh, Joe, you got uh, end of the year stuff for Joe Holmes' Frame as well coming yeah, up. Yeah, right? I'm, I'm working on that um, this weekend. It should be up no later than, like, hopefully Sunday evening. And then uh, voting for that's going to go through Christmas, so uh, so you know a couple of weeks. Uh, so yeah, voting for that will go up this weekend. Word, and we'll have the we'll have the end of the year list for the coalition dot com getting put together as well. So definitely look out for those. Um, 
Shoot, I was trying to think of a way to stall and hopefully get Dom in here. <laughs> it's been an hour, though. <laughs> what did I tell you? I should, we should have put money on this. <laughs> you got me, dog. Oh, no, Dom might have dove, dove off in a bottle somewhere and, and, and tapped out. <laughs> you notice Kel, hey, Kel, Kel's video is not on, so the Henny bottle is on tap in front of her. Hey, right relax, now. relax. <laughs> <laughs> Straight chugging Henny on a Friday night. <laughs> Y'all caught me off guard. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get you in the group so you'll be caught up on everything from here. Yeah. But um, let's go ahead and get last words from everyone. Oh, actually, no. There was one topic that we did talk about that I didn't ask you about, Kels. Did you listen to Black Friday from J. Cole and Kendrick Lamar? Um, uh, kind of. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't finish? I didn't. I'm sorry. Like this is so terrible, but like I almost didn't want to listen to J Cole finish. Like I love J Cole and I love what he's done for himself. But it's very respectable, and I like his older music. But he's just he's boring me at this point. Oh man. I mean, you know what? Know. If you listen to his Black Friday first, then I can understand not wanting to continue because yeah, that's I, what happened. I was, yeah, I was <laughs> I was telling him earlier that. He, I, he pissed me off on the earlier part of that song. I'm like, come on, man. You you can do like, better than uh, this. Yeah. But Kendrick snapped on his, though. I have to go back and listen to it just for that fact because everybody's telling me. And I couldn't really appreciate Kendrick as much because I was so, like, <laughs> You <what>? so hurt? <laughs> <laughs> this is what you gave us? <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yeah. But I don't know. We'll see. I, I still think the project from them, a project from them, uh, would be a good listen. I do think that when they get into the studio together, we'll get some dope stuff. But you know, I, not everybody feels that way. I, I, I would but, listen to it. I would. Uh, it would be something I would definitely check out a full project from them. Word. But uh, let's go ahead and get last words from everyone. Uh, start us off, Richard Bailey. Yes. Thank you for having me on the show. Um, much respect to Jay Z, but Nas is where it's at. <laughs> Man, why you had to do that? We was we was trying we didn't, we was trying not we trying to be above that, Rich. <laughs> right, okay, yeah, 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 yeah. We'll, save that for later. Man, we we had talked about ether without making it a problem. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? We we had a whole hour plus long show without getting the Dom versus Jay Z. <laughs> yeah, of course, Rich Cole. He had to do like it. That. He had to. <laughs> oh, uh, Joe. That's ridiculous. <laughs> on on the God MC's fucking birthday. <laughs> um, no, JoeHobesMF.com. Check it out, Indie Hip Hop. Like I said earlier, um, I will have the awards for the 2015 uh, up no later than Sunday evening uh, to vote on and stuff. That'll last for a couple of weeks. Um, check out the playlist that I did on thecoalition.com for Jay-Z's birthday. The Pimp C one is coming this weekend. Uh, I'm putting the final touches on it before I go to bed. Um, so, yeah, and, and check out thecoalition.com because it's it's awesome. Duh. Absolutely. Absolutely. Kels. Yeah, well, thank y'all for having me. As late for as like it is, it's fine. <laughs> it's always a pleasure. And, uh, oh, let me plug this real quick. I, we were talking about Houston artists. One of our, uh, the, how I feel, one of our best rappers out of the city's name is DeLorean. He's on tour with Big Crit on the Critically Acclaimed Tour right now. I have an interview with him coming up this weekend. That uh, Well, the article should be posted this weekend. I want y'all to check that out. He's dope. And, dope, um, dope. End of the year stuff coming soon. And rest in peace, Pimp C. Yeah, rest in peace, yeah. Pimp C. And I've been seeing so many people post pictures of the damn critically acclaimed tour and pissing me off left and right because I ain't getting it. <laughs> Yo, I'm still, I still don't know, like, if I can go to that or not. Like, you need the, to. The Columbia show is next Tuesday, and I still haven't heard from my, my rep if uh, I can get in or not. <laughs> when are you going to show I hope you uh, get to pull that off so you so I can live vicariously through you. <laughs> when, Instagram videos. Oh, what'd you say, Rich? When's that Atlanta show? The eighteenth. It's a couple of Fridays from now. Damn it. Okay. <laughs> I'm gonna try I'm gonna try I'm gonna try to make it to that, but you know, I got I gotta see a very important movie the night before, so 
let's we'll see what happens. What you talking about, Rich? Well, you already know because you're endorsing it right now with that hat. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. 18 Friday. That's 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 doable. Let's talk I about that. I forgot it came out that weekend. Uh, but yeah, I hope you find a way to go and get and see that. Oh yeah, I, I need to go. I need to go to some some type of uh, uh, show. Yeah, because me, you know, I stood in line. I took the L for everybody in South by Southwest and was like, I'm gonna hold this spot while y'all go out there and explore everything. And when y'all get back, we going to see Crit. Nope, they cut us off. <laughs> <laughs> we got, Have we you got ever seen off. him live? We, we got no. cut off twice in the same weekend for Crit. Oh yep. shit! Waited in two lines for two hours. lines. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, shout out to everybody that watched the show live. We greatly appreciate it. The people that offered their comments up yeah. that we got to talk about on the show. Uh, we'd like to have that more often. That's why we post up the live uh, show now on thecoalition.com so we can get all this insight and everything. But if you are watching this after the f uh, fact, hit the comment section. We'll try to shout you out on the next episode, uh, which the next episode is the Big 50. So we're going to have to find out a way to do something uh, really, really big. Oh, super late. Um, hell yeah. Um, I'm sure Gary's <laughs> going to try to get 50 Cent on the show. That ain't going to happen, bro. You can, you can let that go, my brother. I'll call him. <laughs> <laughs> we ain't gonna have 50 on here because he's probably gonna get on here and bully everybody on the show anyway. So <laughs> we don't we don't need that in our life. But um, we'll try to do some, we're gonna do something special and we hope everybody tunes in for it. We'll have some guests from some other websites and other podcasts and stuff that are gonna join us and talk about music with us. And we greatly appreciate it. Of course, hit the I annotation if that's back now. Then donate to thecoalition.com. Visit the other websites that you heard mentioned on here. Show some support, show some love, and we will see y'all next time. Peace out and have a happy holidays. Rest in peace, Pepsi. Happy.